Hey friend, welcome to our new homestead pantry. I was planning on giving you a tour of this space today, but it, it sort of occurred to me that that would be like going to read you a book, but starting on the second to last chapter and somehow expecting you to understand the whole story. The truth is that needing an entire room to store your food in isn't something that just happens overnight. It's a journey. And that journey starts in the kitchen because the reality is that having a well-stocked pantry is essentially worthless if you have no idea how to use the things that are in it or even what to put in it. That's why the very first chapter in building out your own homestead pantry is going to be to learn how to cook. And along with that, to discover what your preferred style of cooking is gonna be. Now, I'll be the first to admit that my spouse and I perhaps had a bit of a leg up on this step in our journey. Each of us had worked in the food industry at various points and we definitely picked up some cooking skills along the way. But we were also just naturally inclined to enjoy the cooking process. We love having friends and family over so that we can cook for them. And we were even part of a supper club for a while with a group of friends where each month we would pick a different country and we would all bring a dish from that country, sort of potluck style. So food has always played a major role in both our enjoyment and our entertainment. But for anyone who's just getting started on their own cooking journey and developing their own preferences for cooking styles, my number one tip is to start collecting recipes. Now, at first, I like to do this just using a notes app in my phone, but any time I find myself going back to a recipe for the second or third time, I have learned to print those recipes. And after I print them, I store them in our recipe binder that looks like this. Now, there's a couple of reasons for this. First and foremost, I personally find cooking with my phone out to be incredibly distracting. All the ads, pop-ups, buttons, the screen timing out on you, your hands are all messy. It's just, it can, it can be difficult at times. I prefer to have that hard copy. But the other big reason for that is because over the years, I've just found that really great tested recipes are getting harder and harder to find amongst all the food blogs and Pinterest boards out there. I also found great recipes that I'd used multiple times but when I went to go back to find them again, that blog was suddenly gone. So these days I always print out the recipes that we learned, that we've learned that we really like and keep them for safekeeping here. Now, as you go about collecting recipes for yourself, there's a couple of recommendations I would make in terms of what to look for in those recipes. First, I would recommend looking for recipes that primarily utilize whole foods and basic ingredients. And as we continue down this journey of building out a pantry, it'll become clear why that is so important. Second, I would recommend collecting recipes that expose you to a variety of different cooking styles and techniques. Things like building layers of flavor in a pan with a number of different aromatics and then deglazing that pan, or learning to make different types of sauces and gravies, or working with different types of bread doughs. Because as you collect different recipes and are exposed to different styles and techniques, you're going to start to develop a preference for certain styles and techniques, and that's what's going to lead you to your own cooking style. As you begin cooking more regularly and trying out different techniques, you're going to find that you naturally gravitate towards certain types of recipes, certain ways of putting together a meal. Maybe you're someone who would prefer to get a bunch of your prep work done on the weekends and you want to say grill up a whole bunch of chicken breasts on Sunday and then use them in various ways throughout the week. Or perhaps you're someone that's really driven by their daily cravings in the kitchen and you don't want to figure out what's for dinner until until something strikes your fancy. Or maybe you're someone with really hectic afternoons and so you're going to gravitate towards like a lot of slow cooker recipes and soups and stews where you can start something early in the morning let it simmer all day and by the time your day gets crazy you know you already have a delicious meal ready to go i know for me personally i have found that i gravitate towards a lot of things like grain bowls and uh, different types of salads because i 
love recipes that allow me to kind of chip away at the kitchen work throughout throughout my day. So right now I'm about to start some farro and lentils for a grain bowl we're having tonight. And then a little while later, after I you know, moved the laundry along and gotten some things done in the garden, I'm going to come back into the kitchen and put together a tahini sauce that's going to go on that grain bowl. And then as we get closer to dinner, I'm going to roast up some cauliflower and chop up some fresh herbs. And then when dinner time rolls around, all I have to do is assemble all those things. On the other hand, my spouse has discovered that he really loves to spend his time on the weekends learning to master some of our family favorites. Like he's gotten really great at making his own pizza as well as chicken wings and things like that that we would otherwise spend quite a bit of money to go out to eat or to get takeout. And on the weekdays, he prefers to kind of follow that easy formula of pick a protein, pick a veg, pick a starch, and give yourself a nice square meal. Whatever you find your preferences to be, lean into those preferences and seek out more recipes that fall in line with that because that's what's going to keep cooking enjoyable for you. So the second chapter in our journey towards a well-stocked pantry is going to be to learn to shop more intentionally. And my number one tip for learning to shop more intentionally is simply to shop less often. We strive to only go to the grocery store about once a week to pick up perishable items like dairy and fresh fruits and vegetables. And the reason shopping less often is going to help you be more intentional is First and foremost, it's gonna kind of force your hand into planning ahead about the things you're gonna buy and the things you're gonna make that week. But what it's also gonna do for you is it's going to start developing the skills that allow you to adapt recipes to meet what you already have on hand. Perhaps you find a recipe that you're really excited about, but there's one or two things in that recipe that you don't already have. Rather than running to the store real quick to get those things, you can start to experiment with what you might be able to substitute instead and still make a really great meal. Along those lines, when it comes to being intentional, one of the best tools we have is meal planning. And I know there's some people that let, hear the words meal planning and they're out. They're like, I tried that, it didn't work for my family. But to me, that's kind of like saying, I tried asparagus once, I didn't like the way it was cooked, I don't like asparagus. There's a lot of different ways to go about meal planning and how you meal plan is going to change and evolve over time, over your cooking journey, but also throughout the various seasons, depending upon what's coming out of the garden or whether your farmer's market is open that time of year. So when we first started meal planning, that looked pretty, like a pretty typical version of meal planning where we would sit down on, on the weekend and plan out the recipes we wanted to make that week and then go to the store with a list based off those recipes of the things we needed to buy to make all of them. And while that worked, we also found that it tended to leave us with leftover extra ingredients. There's only two of us and we don't always need four chicken breasts in a package. Or we were buying specialty things that we used for one recipe that week, but didn't really, um, they ended up becoming food waste because we didn't make good use of them. So slowly we started evolving how we meal planned. The first step was to make a meal plan that utilized ingredients in multiple recipes when we knew we had to buy them in certain quantities. Then over time, we started stocking our pantry better and we were able to develop a meal plan closer to what we have now where we keep a running list of some of the things we have on hand. Some of the vegetables we know we have in the freezer, meats we know we have in the freezer, what cheeses we have on hand at the time, and any fresh veg that we picked up that week. And as we've developed our skills, we're able to put together meals based off of, largely off of what we have, and just pick up a couple extra things to sort of make it special. During certain parts of the year, we don't even make a meal plan at all. We've developed our skills to the point now that we can go pick up say five proteins for the week, seven to 10 different vegetables and a couple of cheeses and know that we can work with those things to make a variety of tasty meals for the week. My other two tips for shopping more intentionally are going to happen when you're actually at the grocery store. 
The first one's going to be to learn to read ingredients lists. Now, you don't need to be able to pronounce everything on that ingredients list, but you want to learn to start deciphering what is actually necessary to making that item, like the oats in a granola bar, say, and what ingredients are fillers and preservatives that don't necessarily need to be there. But most importantly, don't be afraid to be that lady standing in the aisle googling what is hydrogenated soybean oil. It's important, you need to know what's in the food that you and your family eat. So learn to be familiar with the ingredients that are on the back of the package. The other tip I have is to shop the perimeters of your grocery stores. You've probably heard this before and there's good reason for it. It's going to help you avoid a lot of those confusing ingredients lists because in the middle of the store, that's primarily your pre-packaged shelf stable items. Around the perimeter of the grocery store is where you're going to find the produce section, the meat and seafood, the dairy, the bulk bins with lots of grains and lentils and things like that. So stick to that perimeter and you can avoid a lot of the headaches in those ingredients lists. As you go about developing your preferred cooking style and shopping more intentionally for the ingredients you need, you're going to start setting yourself up for success in the next chapter of this journey, which is learning what to put in your pantry. As you go about your shopping each week, there's going to be things that need to be purchased fresh regularly, or maybe you could purchase a little extra and freeze it, but there's also going to be a number of items that you find yourself buying regularly that have really great shelf life. And beginning to purchase those sorts of items that store well in larger quantities is really where your pantry can start saving you both time and money. Now, early on, there's going to be some initial investments you need to make in your food storage systems. In the beginning, for us, that looked like scouring the shelves of our local thrift stores for swing top jars and larger storage vessels that were nice and airtight and picking those up when we found them. Later on, as we started to expand on our pantry, we found ourselves really gravitating towards a products called Cambros, which are uh, really common in the food service industry. They're large plastic tubs that come in a number of different sizes with uh, nice strong lids that fit on them. They're really durable and you can pick those up at um, a lot of your restaurant supply stores. And then even further into the journey, as we started wanting to be able to store food for longer periods of time and keep more food on hand, that looked like investing in canning jars, as well as uh, five gallon buckets with gamma lids, which are a really great airtight lid that allows you to turn a five gallon bucket into a great food storage system that's easy to access on a regular basis if you need to. As we invested in some of those food storage solutions, that opened up the doors for us to begin exploring bulk shopping options. And over the years, we have found ourselves gravitating towards a few different, few different establishments for that. As I mentioned, restaurant supply stores are a great option. In our area, the primary chain of those is called US Chef Store, and I believe they're nationwide. So go ahead and look up if you've got one near you. I think a lot of people don't realize that these stores are open to the public, but you are more than welcome to go shop in there for whatever you need. For us, I usually get a big bag of lemons there each month. Um, again, like I said, we will buy some of our food storage options like those Cambros there, as well as a lot of cooking utensils that are just built better than the things that you can buy in most big box stores or, um, or even online. Now, not everything in a restaurant supply store is going to be a great fit for a home. We don't need a five gallon jug of olive oil at a time, nor do we have a place to store that. But on the other hand, there's certain random things that we've discovered that we can get a better deal there than anywhere else we've shopped. One of those is regular size cans of wild caught tuna. Another one is uh, jars of maple syrup. They have the best price we've found. So we keep a list along with our other bulk shopping list of the things that we want to pick up at that store each month. The primary place that we prefer to do most of our bulk shopping is with a company called Azure Standard, who's actually based here in Oregon. And if you follow very many other homesteading accounts on YouTube, you've likely heard of them before. 
Azure is essentially an online based health food store that really caters to those of us that want to shop in larger quantities. Now, you don't have to buy everything in large quantities. If you want to order just one bottle of ketchup from them, you can absolutely do that. But the way you really save money with them is by ordering, say, a case of ketchup and then storing the extras yourself until you need them. So the way Azure works is that there's no membership fees or anything like that but you do need to sign up for an account on their website. And then once you sign up for an account, they're going to give you a list of drop sites in your area. And those drop sites are run by drop coordinators. And sometimes that site, that site is simply at that coordinator's home and you need to show up on delivery day and pick your items up off of their porch or out of their driveway. In other cases, drop coordinators select an alternate locations like the parking lot of their church or a large shopping center where everyone can get together, meet the semi truck, help unload, and then sift out what belongs to who and, and take home your items. So if you think you might be interested in shopping through Azure or you just wanna check out what they have to offer and if it would be a good fit for your family, I'll leave a link down in the video description and that link is gonna take you directly to their website. But then if you choose to sign up for an account and shop after going through our link, we'll get a little bit of a kickback for bringing them a new member. So if it's a good fit for you, great. We super appreciate you using our link, but otherwise no pressure. The final place that we like to shop for bulk items is somewhat specific to us. Um, we have in our area a company called Bob's Red Mill. If you're out east, you might be familiar with King Arthur. Well, out west, our sort of equivalent is Bob's Red Mill and their headquarters are just a couple of miles from us. So every couple of months when we need to restock on bread flour or double O flour for pasta and pizza or some of the other mostly grain based bulk items that they have, we'll go down there. They have a great little uh, cafe where we can have breakfast and sort of make a morning out of it and we'll stock up on some of those items. So definitely keep an eye out in your area. I know in some parts of the country, a lot of people really love Amish grocery stores for bulk shopping, but keep your eyes out. There's lots of bulk shopping options out there that maybe aren't your typical Costco or Sam's Club or things like that. Look for those hidden gems and help support some local companies in the process. As you begin to learn more and more about the ingredients that are in the foods that you eat and you start to keep more of those ingredients on hand in your own pantry, there's kind of this natural next step that falls into place, which is you start to think differently about some of the things you're still buying at the store and wondering whether or not you might be capable of making them for yourself rather than paying someone else to make them for you. I know for me, one of the big goals I had was to make most of our own bread products. I worked in a bakery for a couple of years and while there I discovered that it really doesn't take much to make really great bread and pastries. So I started exploring sourdough first and then more yeasted bread products, making our own bagels and even hamburger buns. And nowadays I make most of the bread products that we consume regularly. Along those same lines, during the warm part of the year, my spouse's favorite breakfast is yogurt with granola. And we discovered that we could purchase really high quality, locally produced dairy and make our own yogurt for about half the price that we were paying for it at the grocery store. And by purchasing each of the components we needed to make granola, we could not only tailor that recipe to our own tastes, but make it for significantly lower cost as well. Now, if you're just getting started on, on this sort of part of the journey, I think a really great place to start is with salad dressings and condiments. Salad dressings in particular have so many things put into that bottle to get them to last for months in your refrigerator that don't need to be there. And when you start making them fresh yourself as you need them, you can really control the quality of ingredients and make better choices for not only your budget, but for your health. Along, uh, again, along those same lines, condiments. I have started making a lot of the condiments that we use regularly, like barbecue sauce and ranch dressing, simply by learning to utilize my garden space better. 
I started growing the things that we eat the most of and also started growing things specifically so that I could make some of those products. And that brings me to the final chapter in this journey towards building out a well-stocked pantry, which is learning preservation skills. When it comes to food preservation skills, I think a lot of people's minds immediately go towards canning your own food. And while canning food has been an essential part in our own personal journey towards building out our homestead pantry, I honestly don't think it's the best place for most people to get started. The most accessible way for most people to start building out their own pantry is simply by learning the best ways to freeze the various items that you use regularly. That might be things that are coming out of your garden during the heavy harvest season that you want to grow enough of to get yourself through the winter too. So learning whether or not those vegetables need to be blanched before you freeze them to maintain the best texture when you go to use it later, or figuring out whether you're more likely to use sliced peppers or diced peppers in the recipes you make all winter. In that same realm, learning to freeze meat products is especially helpful in building food security into your pantry and in saving you a lot of money. Early on in the process, we decided to learn how to break down whole chickens, not only because it saves us a lot of money, but it also allows us to package those chicken parts in the quantities that are gonna best meet our family's needs and the recipes we like to make, so that we're not forced into buying four chicken breasts when we only wanna use two that week. Another great place to get started when it comes to food preservation is learning how to ferment foods. Not only does fermenting require far less equipment and expertise than learning to can, but it's also a great way to make use of some of those smaller harvests that come out of the garden. I know I personally gravitate towards fermentation, especially uh, near the beginning and end of any any given crops harvest season, because the amount I'm pulling at those times often doesn't uh, warrant a full day's worth of work in the kitchen or won't fill a full canner load. And so for a few minutes worth of effort, I can make a great jar of pickles and not let that small harvest go to waste. Speaking of the garden, I think an often overlooked set of preservation skills when it comes to building out a pantry is learning which crops you can grow specifically for storage sake. Things like onions, garlic, uh, winter squash, as well as potatoes and sweet potatoes. And then with growing those, learning how to properly cure and store them to get the longest shelf life out of those items. After you begin to master some of those more entry level food preservation skills, then you can begin to explore whether or not you want to invest in more time consuming or more costly methods of food preservation, such as canning, dehydrating, or even freeze drying. Because my biggest tip for anyone learning to preserve their own food is to start off by investing only in the tools necessary to make that food preservation technique possible and wait to invest in some of the tools that might just make it easier. For example, when I first got started canning, I, I purchased a used canner at one of our local thrift stores because I didn't know yet if it was going to be something I wanted to do regularly. But once I discovered that it was going to be a major part in how we chose to build out our pantry, then I was able to invest in a little bit nicer canner and some of the tools that made the job just a little bit easier, like a roaster oven or a food mill. So as you can see, the journey to a well-stocked pantry really doesn't happen overnight. The more ingredients you choose to keep on hand on a regular basis and the larger quantities of those you start buying, the more food preservation skills you add to your repertoire and the more tools you acquire to make those preservation skills easier. That's how you get to the place where you need an entire room to store your food in. Now, maybe sometime I'll give you the full tour, but what I wanted to show you today was not really what's in here, but how we got here. Because every homestead dream, whether it's a garden or a pantry or a milk parlor, it has to start in its own classroom. And when it comes to the pantry, that classroom isn't here, it's here. So thanks so much for watching and we hope to see you in our classroom again real soon.